starring Anne Revere and Ted Donaldson in Circus Day on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. But first, here is Gain Whitman. Before we begin our play tonight, here is helpful information about DuPont Zeland Durable Repellent Finish. Zeland is the water repellent that is different because it is durable. Rainwear, sportswear, and children's clothes treated with Zeland do not need reprocessing because unlike ordinary water repellents, Zeland protection will not come out at the laundry or dry cleaners. Zeland treated garments will continue to give you rain protection after many washings or cleanings. DuPont Zeland. It's one of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> DuPont Company presents Circus Day, starring Anne Revere as Mrs. Hopkins and Ted Donaldson as her son, Jeff, on The Cavalcade of America. Ladies and gentlemen, Presenting the greatest sex of all time. Thrilling, terrifying, tremendous, feats of daring. The marvelous, maddening, miraculous escape from the very door. Yes, folks, it's the Bolton and Leopold Yellow Circus. One of the dozens of circus companies that have crisscrossed America for many a decade. Circus Day has been, and still is, a time when the heart beats faster and carnival fever runs through towns like an epidemic. This is the story of the long-awaited day in the little town of Fairfield, Iowa. It is 4.30 in the morning, and the Bolton and Leopold Yellow Circus is unloading from the railroad siding. The circus has come to town. Easy as she goes. Let her down easy, like. That's the last wagon off. Get a move on, Rand. Okay, okay. Take her off the siding there. The cat cages off first and set them down. Come on, boys, let's move. Morning, boys. Morning, Cheyenne. Fine morning, fine morning. Yep, sure. Well, I'll get along out of your way. See, it's a lot. <laughs> well, where'd you come from, engine? Engine? What engine? What? <laughs> what are you doing here at this hour, son? Uh, I come to see you on low. Oh, mighty early for a shaver to be out of his bed. Yes, sir. Well, see all you wanted to see? Oh, but the elephants. Where are they, sir? <laughs> What's your name, son? Jeff. Jeff Hopkins. Uh-huh. Mine's Charlie. No, to Cheyenne Charlie. Cheyenne Charlie? Mm -hmm. Oh, jeepers. Holy smoke and fog legs. You're the Wild West rider. I sure am, Jeff. But let you and me get something straight. Yes, Mr. Cheyenne? Ain't there no school today? Oh, sure. But it's too early. School don't take up until 8 o'clock. Uh-huh. And... You got a mom? Sure thing. Swell one, huh? You bet. Dad's a great fella, too, huh? He, he's dead. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, Jeff. You better get on back home before that swell mom gets to fretting over you. Well, hey, how'd you know she didn't know I was here? Jeff, I got a great goatee and mustache, but I didn't always have them. I was about your age and size once, too. And my swell mom didn't know where I was half the time, either. <laughs> Let's see. Town's over two miles from here, ain't it? Well, that's right. Maybe a little more. But I don't mind. Uh-huh. Let's see, it's now 4.55. Figuring on the way a kid walks and counting in, picking up stones and sticks, chucking rocks at trees, chasing down a squirrel or two, that two miles should take you just about, well, right up to the time your mom gets you out of bed. Gee, Mr. Cheyenne, how'd you know I'd do all them things? I ain't never growed up, Jeff. <laughs> I do them myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you're swell. Maybe you'll come see us, huh? Well, now, might be. But right now, I got to think about my laundry. Know anybody that'd turn out about two ton of shirts and underwear in a day? Well, my mom. Gee, my mom would do it. She'd do it for you, Mr. Cheyenne. Okay, you write down the address, and I'll be there. Jeff. Jeff, time to get up now. Jeff, where are you? Here I am, Mom. I'm up already. And dressed. What's come over you? Nothing. You feeling all right? Sure. Jeff. What? That went on your shoes. Did you go down to the railway station? Yes, Mom. 
Oh, now, Jeff, what did I tell you last night? Oh, you told me not to get up early this morning and go watch the circus come off the train. And why did you? Oh, but gosh, Mom. Oh, Jeff, why did you have to do it? Oh, but, Mom, on account of Dad was in the circus, maybe I can't help it. Maybe it's kind of boring in Jeff, don't say that, please. Was Dad killed in the circus? Did something go wrong? How did you know? Huh? I found a clipping in the desk. Only I couldn't understand it. Jeff, I've always meant to tell you, but after it happened, I, I wanted to shut the circus out of our lives. I wanted to settle down here, anywhere, and make sure that you'd live a normal life and go to school and learn something. I just wanted never to hear the word circus again. Oh, it must have been awful, Mom. What happened? No, I don't want to talk about it, Jeff. Even now, after all these years, I, I still get cold thinking about it. Was Dad wonderful? The most wonderful man in the whole circus. Gosh. Now, come on and have your breakfast, Jeff. The porridge is ready. All right, Mom. Now, I don't want you to be late to school again. Did you finish your homework last night? Almost. Your arithmetic? Uh, almost. Now, Jeff. Oh, gosh, Mom, the stuff is so silly. A paper hanger has to paper a room, and the walls are nine feet high, and so on and so on. How many rolls of paper does he need? Now, what's wrong with that? Well, I'm not going to be a paper hanger. What do I care about it? How all about such dumb things? Now, look, Jeff. All that you learn now is going to help you later. You never know how, but it will. So you do those problems, Jeff. Oh, I try to. All right, now, mind you, do your best. I will. <laughs> Hey, what's that? Oh, gee. It's the circus passing by. Gee, isn't it wonderful? Yes, it is wonderful. Come on now, Jeff. Eat your breakfast. Oh, boy. Look, Mom, there's a wild west rider. There's Cheyenne Charlie. Mr. Cheyenne, Cheyenne Charlie. Hello. Gosh, gosh, Mom. He answered me. I wonder if it's Cheyenne Charlie. Well, one of the greatest riders in the world, that's all. I... I talked to him this morning. What about? I, I asked him to come to our house while he's here. I gave him my address. You think he'll come? Well, let's not worry about that now, Jeff. I guess he's about the greatest man in the circus. Come on now. Stop your dreaming. Go eat your breakfast. Off to school. Okay, Mom. But watch out for Cheyenne Charlie. And be nice to him when he comes. <laughs> don't worry. I don't think there's much chance of he's coming here. <laughs> Will you take the next problem? Yes, ma'am. Uh, if a bridge can stand a weight of three tons and a truck weighing one ton is going across it and another truck... Oh, for Pete's sake. All right, Jeff. What's the answer? How many trucks can go across without going... Well, you're supposed to have worked on this last night. Oh, it's so silly. <laughs> What did you say? Well, I'm not going to be a truck driver, so why should I have... Yes, go and stand in the corner, and you will stay after school. Oh, but it's circus day. Stand in the corner. Yes. Yes? Is this the home of Mrs. Hopkins? I'm Mrs. Hopkins. Well, ma'am, I'm Cheyenne Charlie from the Bolton Leapole Yellow Circus. Oh. Your youngin told me this morning that you washed clothes, so, so I brought my sack of Sunday best. Oh. Is that what Jeff told you, that I take in washing? He sure did, ma'am, bright and early this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't do any outside washing. It's all I can do to keep up with our own. Ah, gee. <laughs> I reckon the boy told the windy. Well, I, I guess he was just, just trying to get you to come to the house. Well, no harm done. I guess I'll vamoose along now and... What's the matter? Excuse me, ma'am, but where have I seen you before? Well, I don't know. I just noticed that picture on the wall. Ain't that... Sure it is. Hopkins the Magnificent, ain't it, ma'am? Yes. That's Hopkins the Magnificent. Of the high trapeze and... Say, wait a minute. Why, you're the girl who used to ride around on the elephant. Yes? Sure enough. <laughs> oh, I guess you wouldn't remember me, ma'am. I just joined up as one of the riders when you left to, to have your baby. Say, the youngin. What about him? Is he the son of Hopkins the Magnificent? Yes. Well, yes. no wonder he likes circuses. 
No wonder he come around at dawn. No, no, like... please, don't talk like that. For heaven's sakes, please. Oh. Well, what, what have I said, ma'am? Oh, I'm sorry. It, it's just that always since the accident, I, I've been afraid that someday Jeff would want to join a circus and, and go through what we went through. It was an awful thing, ma'am. I remember it like it was today. I never saw such an aerial artist. He never slipped. No, ma'am. Even on that day, it wasn't really a slip. One of the ropes snarled. Just that time, the net had to fail. The only time I ever saw one do it. And that's the reason why... Well, when Jeff gets so excited about the circus, my heart stands still. Oh, he's he's just a kid, ma'am. I reckon it's just a kid's excitement. I know, but how can I be sure? Maybe if you treated it more natural-like, uh, he wouldn't feel like it was some special fever that was in his blood. Maybe if you took him to the circus yourself, ma'am. Just like other kids, ma'am. I know. Ma I know I've told myself that, but I'm scared. Oh, please, if he comes around here again and starts talking dreamy ideas about a circus, don't let him. I want him to go up, go to school and, and learn something. I know powerful well how you feel, ma'am. Someday he'll grow up and he'll decide for himself what he wants to be, but... When that time comes, I want him to have a choice. I want him to have enough education so that he can be what he wants to be. I know what you mean, ma'am. I sure enough do. If he comes to you, will you talk to him? I sure will, ma'am. For the son of Hopkins the Magnificent, there ain't nothing I wouldn't do. Thanks. If, if you want to leave those clothes with me, maybe I can find time to do them. <laughs> Jeff. Oh, oh yes, Mom. I was just thinking. Dreaming again? No, just thinking, Mom. About, about what? Well, I was thinking about. No, now don't tell me. Hand me those clothespins. Sure. Gee, it was swell of you to do those clothes for Mister Cheyenne. Why on earth did you tell him that I'd do it, Jeff? Oh, he's a swell guy. <laughs> It's a good thing you don't meet many swell guys. Oh, you ain't mad, are you, Mom? Mad? No. Come here, Jeff. I never get mad at you, darling. Not really. Just... Well, just a little impatient. Oh. Well, well that ain't the same thing, is it? No, oh, I suppose not. But, Jeff, I wish you'd pay more attention to your schoolwork and do your lessons. Lessons? Oh, gee, Mom, I do. But those arithmetic problems are so dumb. Dumb? What do you mean? Oh, like... Well, if Farmer Jones had three acres and gave one-third to his son and kept one-fourth for himself, oh, gosh, what kind of a farm would keep dividing his land up all the time? <laughs> Cheyenne Charlie wouldn't do a dumb thing like that. Cheyenne Charlie doesn't have anything to do with it. Now, Jeff, why can't you keep your mind on other things besides the circus? Oh, gee, Mom, today's circus day. But honest, after I see the show tonight, I promise I'll forget all about circuses and do my arithmetic. Jeff. Look at me. Yeah? Jeff, you'll keep that promise, won't you? I never did break one, did I, Mom? No. Only tiny little ones. Oh, like going and swimming when I said I wouldn't? Yes. That's a tiny promise, Jeff, and you shouldn't break it. But there's something in boys, big and little, that makes them break promises like that. But there are other kinds of promises, Jeff. Ones that you have to keep. Sure, I know. They're the ones that'll affect somebody else if you break them. That's the kind you must keep. I always keep the big one. I know. Now we go to the circus tonight and Wait, have... what? You going too? Yep, I'm going with you, Jeff. Oh, gee, holy smoke and frog legs. But I thought you didn't like to. I mean... Well, I changed well, how... my mind. Now, come on, hand me those clothes, Jeff. Or well, Mr. Cheyenne Charlie's going to have to ride out like Lady Godiva. <laughs> You are listening to Anne Revere as Mrs. Hopkins and Ted Donaldson as Jeff, her son, in Circus Day on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As our second act opens, Mrs. Hopkins has not only assured her son Jeff that he may attend the circus, but has promised to go with him. And now as they are entering the circus grounds, Jeff walks around wide-eyed in breathless awe of the snake charmer, fat lady, 
cotton candy, popcorn, balloons, flags, pennants, and other fascinations of the great Midway. Gee, gee, Mom, look at it. Ain't it wonderful? Oh, boy. Look, the animals are right over there, and the sideshows are right down there. Yes, I know, Jeff. And there's the big top, Mom. Mom, you are going in with me, ain't Jeff. you? Are you sure you wouldn't rather go in with the other kids? Oh, gee, Mom, you said you would. And that's a big promise. Like one of those you told me nobody should ever break. Sure, Jeff, it's a big promise to you. I'm breaking one I made to myself, though, a long time ago. Oh, come on, here we go. Oh, boy. First, can we look at the animals, huh? <laughs> All right, Jeff, the animals first. <laughs> Your child, a toy balloon. Head there, head there, head there, head there. How much do they cost? Why, for that sweet child, why, here you are, son, and it's only ten cents. That's too much. All right, then give me back the balloon. Johnny, give the balloon back to the man. Ah. Yes, yeah, see, he won't give it back. Oh, you stuck it in his hand. You did it on purpose. Madam, pay me or else give me back my balloon. Johnny, give it back to the man. Ah. Oh, here's your dime, and it's a cheap trick. Thank you, ma'am, thank you. Balloons, balloons, a free balloon with every thin dime. Hurry, hurry, get your balloons. All right, step up, folks. Step up and get your tickets for the big show. A dollar for grown-ups and 50 cents for children. Children in arms are free. I want a ticket for one. Well, how about that boy? You said children in arms free, didn't you? Why, that boy's big enough to carry you inside. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next to him? Mister, I was just inside and someone threw my hat out. Can I go back in? Nobody threw your hat out, son. You ain't never been inside. Get your mother to buy you a ticket. How many, lady? Two, please. One child. Well, here you are, lady. Two tickets go right in. At it. I can't look. Oh, but Mom! What's happening now, Jeff? He's getting pulled way up to the top. He's hanging on by only one hand. Did Dad do that, Mom? Yes. He did that, son. One hand. Hey, he's almost stuck. He is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on Pietro the Peerless as he makes his terrifying leap for life Gee. across the vast expanse of the upper reaches of the big top. A leap from one trapeze to another, turning a triple somersault on the way and ending on the swinging trapeze on the opposite side. Gosh, Mom. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, so the peerless in the leap for life. He's swinging back and forth, higher and higher. I know. I know, Jeff. Without looking. I know every movement, every motion of the trapeze, like a pendulum of a clock. Back and forth. Back and forth. Higher. Higher. And you ain't even looking up. I can tell, Jeff. I can tell by the time that's passed. There's the last bus swing. The last arch of his body. He's let go! He's... <laughs> what happened? He missed, Mom, but he's all right. He landed right in the net. <laughs> Mom, look. Mom, look. He's going to try it again. He's getting ready to go up again. Yes, I know, Jeff. I'm looking. What? You're all right, Mom. You sick? No, I'm all right. Well, you better let me take you home. Come on, we'll go right home. No, Jeff. But, Mom, you... No, Jeff, we'll stay. We'll stay and see the show, Jeff. All the way through. Here, 
Everything's in order. We're ready to move out. Better get with your wagon, Cheyenne. Yeah, I'll close up this tailgate. Hey, 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 what's this? Ow. Huh? A foot. Come on out, you. I'm coming. Hello, Mr. Cheyenne. Well, what are you doing here, Jeff? Well, I've been thinking about it, Mr. Cheyenne, and, well, I want to get into a circus. Oh. What about your mother and your school? Oh, they're always making me do homework. What kind of homework? Oh, problems. Well, do you think you can be in the circus and be an ignoramus? Oh, I suppose not, but... Jeff, did your mother tell you about your father and how he died? She told me tonight. She said he was one of the most wonderful trapeze men she ever saw. He sure enough was. He died in the same kind of fall Pietro had tonight. Only for your father, the net somehow crumpled up that night. It was a carelessness? No, no, Jeff. Folks were never careless in circuses. It was just that they didn't know then what we know now. You see, today we got a man in this circus that figures out things. And he says, if a body weighs 150 pounds and falls 120 feet, how strong does a net have to be at just this point to make sure that... You mean, you mean like a problem? Sure, sure. Like a problem in arithmetic. Gee, I never thought of that. You see, Jeff... Your own father's life might have been saved if we'd have had somebody back then that knew how to figure things out. So if you want to grow up and maybe be useful someday to a circus or something else, maybe, well, you go and work on them problems. All right. Start rolling. Start rolling. Start rolling. So long, Jeff. Go back to your mall and your schooling and forget the circus for a while. I will. So long, Cheyenne Charlie. So long, boy. Jeff, come here. Gee, I, I didn't know you were up, Mom. Oh, yes, I'm up. You sneaked out, didn't you? Uh-huh. Why? Well, I... Why, Jeff? I thought I'd kind of join the circus. Oh. But you came back. Uh-huh. I came back. Good boy. What? You ain't mad? No, Jeff, I'm not. Not at all. What made you come back, son? Well, holy smoke and fog, great. Who wants to be up to be an igna... An ig... Well, who wants to be dumb? What do you mean, son? Oh, look, Mom, those problems we have to do in school, they mean something. You see, supposing a fellow wants to build a bridge or a big building or a circus net, how does he know how to do it if he don't know how? Exactly. It's impossible. Sure is. So I'm going to learn how. Problems are important. Very important. Yes, they are. Now, you better get ready for bed, Jeff. Uh-huh. And get up when I call you the first time. You don't want to be late for school. School? Again tomorrow? I thought it was Saturday. <laughs> well, it's not. Saturday's the day after. Oh, okay. Good night, Mom. And Jeff. Yeah, Mom? Next year, there'll be another circus day. We'll go again, son. You and I. <laughs> Revere and Ted Donaldson will return to our cavalcade microphone in a moment. Now here is Gain Whitman. Two men were fighting, one of them for his life. In the struggle, they crashed into a hanging lamp. It careened wildly back and forth, and the fight went on to its end under flickering light and shadow. As a moviegoer, you may remember the scene in the picture of Dorian Gray. Technically, it was one of the most unusual ever photographed for the screen. This film recently won the award of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for the best black and white photography of the year. Another picture, The Bells of St. Mary's, won the award for the best sound recording. These awards have something in common. For outstanding photography and sound, both depend in great measure upon the quality of the film used. So at the DuPont Company, we are proud 
that the picture of Dorian Gray was photographed on DuPont's Superior II film. And the Bells of St. Mary's was recorded on DuPont 226 Fine Grain Sound Recording Film. This is not the first time DuPont Film has won recognition in Hollywood. In 1943, the DuPont Company received the Academy Award of Merit for outstanding achievement in the development of fine grain motion picture films. We've been making film for movies for many years, as well as for the professional and commercial photographer. For the amateur camera fan, the DuPont Company manufactures Defender photo products. After you click the shutter of your camera, developing and printing the picture is, in addition to technical skill, a matter of chemistry. Chemical reactions take place on the film. Other chemical reactions take place later on, on the sensitized paper. The quality of the image on the film, the contrast of light and dark on the print, the depth and richness of tone, all depend in large degree upon chemical know-how. The skill and experience which DuPont chemists have gained in fundamental and applied research in many fields, applied here to photography. DuPont films and Defender photographic film, paper and chemicals, represent two allied examples of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry. Play ball! Oh, wait a minute, Ted. What was that for? Well, Mr. Whitman, it's just about that time of the year, isn't it? Yes, it is. But I was curious for a different reason. Oh, well, what do you mean, Mr. Whitman? I think, Ted, that Gain is leading up to something about the show for next week. <laughs> is everybody around here psychic? No, but baseball's in the air. You're so right, Miss Revere. And next Monday night, it'll be on the air. Oh, gee, how? Cavalcade is going to do the story of one of baseball's greatest men. The man whose name was known from the big diamonds down to the smallest sandlot. I'll be psychic again, Gain. Make a guess. Okay, go right ahead. John J. McGraw. Gee, John McGraw, the New York Giant? That's it, Ted. And Pat O'Brien is going to star in the role. Say, that's a cavalcade we won't want to miss. Oh, I'll be listening. Buy me a seat in the bleachers. I'll be there, too. You're both in. And while you're still here, we'd like to thank both of you and hand out a pair of orchids for your performances tonight. Thanks Thanks. a lot. Good night. Good night. Anne Revere may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Dragon Wake. And Ted Donaldson may soon be seen in the Columbia production, Return of Rusty. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. In our cast tonight were Griff Barnett as Cheyenne Charlie, Francis X. Bushman, Dick Ryan, Tommy Bernard, Rosemary Kelly, Margaret Brayton, Jack Carrington, and Jerry Hausner. Our cavalcade play was written by Sigmund Miller. This is Tom Collins inviting you to listen next week to The Great McGraw, starring Pat O'Brien, on The Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.